La 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 la. Oh, I didn't see you there. Did you come here to see how many vassals we have as the Austrians in 1503? Quite a few of them. In fact, all of Europe is ours. Look at this. And we can also revoke the privilege at any time we want. But we're not doing that because if we get 15,000 likes, we'll turn this into a world conquest. And we can even get some of the achievements here before we do that world conquest. Also, I'm trying to get to 100,000 subs by the end of 2021. So if you help me out in return, I'll get you a super cool paradox mega campaign. So we did our estate We gave out the plus one mana privileges the minus 25 advisor cost reduction with the patronage of the arts and the religious diplomats Which offers us plus 25 relations with all of our Catholic brethren So that means we can do our first mission a lot faster by allying some of the electors and getting above a hundred Relations with them. We're also going to be selling titles. We'll be recruiting a few mercenary companies so for for the first war, we're gonna use all the mercenary companies and later on we're gonna gradually replace them with regular soldiers. 20th of January 1445 and we can do our first mission, secure the electors and that means we can use our restoration of Union CB against the Bohemians and even co-belligerate the nation of Landshut and Stetten, which means we can bring in Brandenburg into this war, albeit we don't really need them, we can use them as cannon fodder. Let's get a general as well and he has two shock pretty decent since we allied Brandenburg and they are the weakest in our alliance set Bohemia is obviously gonna siege down their lands first remember guys in any war the AI is gonna target the weakest link in your alliance set so make sure you ally some trash insignificant nations and bring them into your wars not a single Austrian province occupied whilst Berlin is taking the brunt of the assault over here Olomouk is done that means we can uh, redirect this force and start sieging down the Silesian lands and Prague is also done so that's actually double whammy right there hot diggity dog Glogo you got killed remember guys that you also have the gold mine in Intel so you want to bring this up to 10 production as soon as you can I will prioritize this over everything else as it is gonna fuel our early expansion massively oh no Brandenburg peaced out I was expecting that to happen to be fair Aragon declared war on Castile for the succession war what Wow Oh, Navarra succession war. Imagine having a war over Navarra. Gold rush. Don't mind if I do. All right, I siege down everything that the Bohemians have. I did not kill off their entire army. They still have quite a lot of troops, but you don't need to kill off all of their army. Just siege down all the fort. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the union with Bohemia, the province of Keb, as well as all of the money that they have. I'm taking Keb because Keb is actually a gold mine. So this is going to be the second gold mine that I'm going to have. Next up, we can do three missions. Decline of Hungary that gives us a restoration of Union on Hungary. Bohemian Control that gives us Imperial Authority growth, which is actually quite good. And the Imperial Ascendancy that gives us minus 10 diplomatic annexation costs. But I'm going to keep this mission and the Decline of Hungary for a little bit later. We have some other plans in the meanwhile. We're going to be attacking the Hungarians. We're not actually going for the restoration of union and there's a couple of reasons why in the 1.32 patch they made AE from personal unions a ridiculously high so if I was to get a PU over the Hungarians I would get a coalition of pretty much all of Europe and I don't want that to happen what I'm gonna do instead I'm just gonna go for a regular conquest war set Poznori as my target here and let's just go ahead and attack them you know what else we're gonna do a massive head move we're gonna pay Bohemia's debt with the money that we took from them so that means we got an extra 25,000 units from Bohemia and their two vassals to help us out against the Hungarians. Sadly, the Poles also attacked the Hungarians, so they will likely take some stuff. But we did manage to get a hold of Zemplin and Trenchin before them. We basically took most of the Hungarian lands, but the uh, Poles actually took a few provinces in Transylvania. I do have a solution to the standoff, however, and that solution is to cuck them from ever taking any land in Hungary. How are we doing this? We're taking Trenchin, Zepesh, and Zemplin, as well as Hunt, because we do have the gold mine in Hunt. As such, it's going to be our third gold mine. We're also taking the two provinces here from Croatia to get a connection to Bosnia for early on expansion into the Balkans and the Ottomans. They definitely increase the cost of AE when you do the PUs, but they decrease the cost of taking provinces, AE and war score cost, that is. So this is more than viable. If I was a 
greedy bastard, I would take Pozoni as well, but that would give me a little bit of a coalition. So if you're doing it, don't take Pozoli, but I'm taking it because I am a greedy bastard and I know how to handle these coalitions quite nicely. We're going to be concentrating all of this area here in Slovakia, core it up right after. Now we have actually two options. After the truce is over with Hungary, we can do the decline of Hungary and get the PU. And seeing as they are considerably smaller now, Hungary is going to be quite okay AE wise to PU, but they still have the same air as our air. So that means once Janos dies or once they get the event around 55, we're going to get a union with the Hungarians without having to enforce it. The added bonuses of getting Slovakia separately is the fact that we can later on integrate them a lot faster and we can do a lot of early expansion around them. And the cherry on top is we have 37,000 manpower. We basically haven't lost almost any troops of our own in both of these wars because we've mostly been using mercenary units. Guess what guys? Charles just became the new leader of Burgundy and he's got no heir and I got a royal marriage with him. So my chances of actually getting the inheritance are massive now. We had to wait for a little bit longer until we got all of the troops that we needed and now we can attack finally the Bosnians. We're gonna co-belligerate the Serbians. Sadly the Byzantines would not join. Would have been nice if they joined because then we could have gotten a vassal or at least a province and release the Byzantines as a vassal from this area. Oh I just realized actually the Poles gave these two provinces back to the Serbians. Look at the massive Austrian swarm everybody. Whoa over there Strasbourg. What's going on here bro? I'm sorry but we cannot let you do this. Milhouse needs to be free. Don't be so aggressive please. Guess now we can do a, a Sitzkrieg as the Germans like to call it. The meteorite of Ensichheim. Wow! The only meteor that gives us one stability. I like this meteor. A little bit of time has passed and we're gonna be piecing out Bosnia. We're not taking all of Serbia because we want to keep some of our aggressive expansion for our future expansion into the HRE itself as we do have some plans for that area also. Literally nobody important would join into this coalition so let's just piece them out now. That means we got the fourth gold mine in Europe in Kosovo under our control and the reality is that because of this our empire expanded so close to the Balkans these nations can also join the HRE and we already have 57 imperial authority because of nations joining the HRE. That means we just did our first reform. Special thanks goes out to Bologna over here. We can also get 5% more crownlands now so that means we got no more autonomy issues whatsoever after the first 10 years of the game. We can also cancel our alliance with the Muscovites now. I only got this alliance to do one of my missions and I really don't need them anymore. You probably guessed the next step. Of course it is the attack on the Venotians that have significant land that we are interested in. And what was I saying guys? In 1455 our heir became the leader of the Hungarian nation thus we got a union for free even though we absolutely butchered this nation the chance of us getting this union is 50% alternatively it can happen that they choose Matthias Corvinus in which case you get a restoration of union CB anyway on the Hungarians that you can enforce once the truce is over remember to keep on adding provinces that you finished coring to the empire for example Ragusa just joined the empire because they have an adjacent province in Donji Kraji that allows them to join the empire and they're not the only one we have 30 imperial authority in just a few years and we're gonna get more once the Albanians are gonna join. Well, 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 if it isn't the Milanese succession, this triggers once they get the Ambrosian Republic and they become a republic and it lets us restore a union over them, bringing them back to a kingdom of sorts, a subordinate kingdom, let's call it. And we're gonna focus all of our might on them. Remember whenever you do PU a nation that you don't necessarily want to completely wipe out their armies. I didn't even touch the Milanese army. I do get a small coalition and that means I got a brand new subject, third personal union, and now I can also piece out the nation of Venos. I'm gonna go for the province of Corfu simply because I wanna attack 
Epirus afterwards, if you know what I'm gonna go for. And I'm also gonna release any of the other nations that I can over here. This also means that that's four other nations that would join the Empire. Another big brain thing we can do is we can ally and eventually diplo vassalize the one province minor of Valachia. And despite the Poles being oh so friendly with us, we're gonna rival them. Also, the independent company helped us out so much. However, we gotta disband them because they got no more manpower pool. In fact, I've done the same thing for all the other mercenary companies. And let's create only a professional regular army, shall we? Also, check it out, guys. We went up to 45 Imperial Authority because guess what? Albania just joined the Empire. Oh boy, look at this, guys. The nation of Provence is now a one province minor. They still have these guys, but I'm sure they're gonna break away at some point since they're stronger than Provence. And the best part is they joined the Empire so I can do my second reform. And I can also attack the French with the Imperial Liberation CB now. But before we do that, we're obviously gonna attack the nation of Epirus. Whoa, Dizzy. It appears that the Burgundian inheritance has just triggered. And we have the union. We got the union, everybody. We got the union. We got the inheritance. Hot diggity dog. We have all of the Netherlands as well now. Bruh, this is ridiculously good RNG. I clearly sacrificed enough goats for this game. That means we can do Austrian Netherlands now. Although that's not really gonna help us with anything since I'm not going colonial. But I just did it because I could, okay? I did it because I could. Obviously, the choice we're gonna go for here is keep the Burgundians because that is rightful Austrian clay and I don't care about the French going to war with me. Come at me, Frenchy. In fact, I'm gonna start positioning my troops by the border here because I'm pretty sure they're gonna attack as soon as the conclusion of this imperial diet finishes. We released the nation of Herzegovina simply so we get another nation to join the empire and as such we get more imperial authority. The conclusion is here, now it's time to see what the French are gonna do about it. Do you have the balls boy? Yep, yep, they do, they, they do have the balls. <laughs> I'm gonna tear you apart. Look at these odds over here, we got 160,000 against their 63,000, bruh. We're basically marching through the French lands as if they all retreated behind the Maginot line. The reality is though, they're actually sieging my personal union members' entire nation down. In fact, they've only focused on Milan this entire war. I don't know what's up with that weird fixation, but I haven't even had the chance of fighting them, man. So, I pretty much managed to avoid conflict altogether throughout this uh, war. Only had like six or so battles, minor battles, but because I occupied most of the country here, including the capital and all of their forts I can piece them out I'll take these three provinces in the north and the one province in the south they're more than happy with this peace deal and I also get a lot of money to use in the process also let's go ahead and release the nation of Byzantium from the one province that we took from Epirus in Arta and then we can reconquer all of these juicy cores everybody and I am gonna get the strong duchies now that I have two vassals giving me two extra diplo relations slots which means I'm at 11 out of 8 and that might seem very sad but it's okay because we'll fix that very soon. The Duchess of Burgundy passed away meaning we got all of these juicy lands here and we've basically doubled in development oh my freaking god. Guess what we can also make Augsburg a vassal diplomatically which means that we didn't use any of our aggressive expansion for this and we're one step closer to getting the city of Ulm which gives a special imperial authority from Free Cities Monument absolutely tailored for us. Looks to me like the Teutons are also in need of a little bit of rescue, shall we say. Think it's time for the big war of this session. Exactly, I'm talking about the Ottoman War. Let's go ahead and get our cores back for both of our vassals, Valachia and Byzantium. Let's set Tirhala as the war target. Call in the Papal States out of the Papal States, but I'm calling them in simply for the memes because it's a Dewa's Vultam, yo. Boy, these guys are gonna get Stack and Vipen. Ah, yes, I'm basically sieging their entire country, but they're going ahead and attacking the Venetians. <laughs> Don't worry, Venice. I'm gonna come and help you out, okay? A little bit late, but it's fine. We're still uh, gonna crush these bastards over here and take back our rightful lands. Hello there, Crusade. Whoa, the Autumn has actually deleted the fort in Selene. This is the first time I've seen the AI actually delete a fort it doesn't need, so I'm a little bit surprised. It deleted the one in Gelibol also. That's gonna make it more 
difficult because that means I have to actually get on the Anatolian side to get some war score. As expected, Lorraine declared an independence war against the Provence. Damn, my vassal swarm actually managed to get to the other side, man. It is a little bit weird. It's literally the entirety of the Ottoman army just running around North Germany. This doesn't feel historical to me. We had to go around the entirety of the Black Sea, but eventually we managed to get the war score that we needed and now we can piece them out. We want to directly own this land so that we eventually manage to expand the Holy Roman Empire into these areas, but we also will be releasing from Kangiri the nation of Eretna. We've also started integrating the great nation of Valicia, so that means we can also concentrate on this land. Well, 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 if it's not the third reform, which means that now we can also add the nations to the empire via attacking them. Speaking of attacking, it would seem like Poland's under attack by the Russians. It is time to save them. We're only doing this for your own good, Poland. Thank you very much, Lithuania, for taking care of my separatists. I really appreciate it, guys. You know what? I'm gonna take care of your forts as a reward. And Buyashaka, I'm also gonna stack wipe your armies whilst I'm at it. Buyashaka, one stack wipe, and a glorious Polish army defeated as well, followed by another stack wipe, of course. Right, now we can actually piece you guys out. And I'm giving all of my lands back to the Teutons, who are my vassal, by the way. And, uh, oh, I forgot about Danzig. No! Oh, well, we'll get him back in the future. And we also took a few lands in the south. We'll take a little bit more in the next war as well. We don't really need the money, but we do need to cancel the supremacy over the crown so we can replace it with the nobility integration policy that lets us integrate our vassals faster and we don't get the debuff to our diplo reputation once we integrate vassals. That is actually one of the best privileges you can ever give as the Austrians. Thank you very much, Ottomans, for blocking the strait here, which means that my troops can actually siege down Venice. What a true friend. You know what I actually am going to do to the Venetians? I'm going to take all of their lands except the small provinces they have in the Aegean Sea. Technically, I'm banishing them into Greece. Croatia had refused to join the Empire still, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to force them to join the Empire. Now, from the Swiss, I could take a lot of stuff, but I'm only taking one province because I just need St. Gallen to do another one of my missions. Okie dokie, Zagreb's out. That means we can piece them out and we're going to expand Empire, which gives us nine Imperial Authority for four provinces provinces that's quite massive not gonna lie also gonna take their money and make them pay us war reparations because why not right hold up a second here bavaria just formed well i have another mission that gives me a pu over bavaria that i haven't taken for a very long time because this nation didn't form so now is the time to enforce our demons everybody let's go with the demons shall we we get 12.40 imperial authority massive and the great part about this reform is that we now get 50% more imperial authority from free cities. Not that that really matters because let's face it, I'm getting insanely high amounts of imperial authority from just expanding the empire. Oh, and I forgot to mention guys, we're the papal controller, which is why the nation of France is in an excommunicado war with us. I did a sneaky. Time to say bye bye French yo. Seriously France, what is your obsession with Milan? Second time you attack only Milan, what's wrong with you? Now, I could completely bash the French, but I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to be taking six provinces or five provinces from them for strategic purposes. You'll see in a while what I'm talking about. Whoa, the famous sack of Ulm. Don't mind if I do, sir. I did attack Ulm because I frankly want to take it for the monument that I mentioned earlier. One thing to note about this is that you need to actually cancel them first as a free city and grant the free city status to another nation, and that will cost you some imperial authority, but I do think it is worth it in the long run. Not to mention, you get rid of Ulm, the most dangerous nation in the game. And we can do another mission because we have von Habsburgs on five countries. One, two, three, four. Bruh, no freaking way. Oh, dude, I can claim their throne. I can so freaking claim their throne. Oh, bro. Can you imagine? I got a freaking alliance with them. I should have just kept the royal marriage. I knew this would happen. Gotta dissolve the alliance now. Now, I'm afraid I'm not gonna wait for the truce, sadly. Gonna get me a little bit of an extra coalition here. But, boy, this would bring me, like, half of Europe in one war. Ottomans, you're safe. 
I was about to attack the Ottomans in a year, but no, this is much more juicy. I'm gonna have to enforce my dynasty. You know what? Let's call on the Palatinate in this one. Holy mother of God! Wow! The Castilians just took a massive chunk out of the French. You know what? That's not so bad, but it does mean that once I do enforce this PU, 55 aggressive... Actually, that's not too much. 55 aggressive expansion is nothing considering I'm getting half of freaking Europe for this. I think the game plan for this is gonna be going into the Portuguese land and uh, taking them out of the war first. Whoa! Hold on a second. Tell me the bad news. I got Imperial Authority and I can do the next reform because of that. But the bad news is, is Wiz? Oh, he's retarded. He's absolutely retarded. 224. Seriously, man? But I mean, I, this guy's 48, so I have to keep this dude, unfortunately. Damn, my vassal swarm absolutely rocking the Neapolitans here. All right, let's get some battles won as well. Oh, you're gonna get stack wiped? Yo, <laughs> you got stack wipe. Hey, no more Castilian armies, y'all. Well, Naples is fully occupied now. I know my plan was initially to attack the Portuguese, but eventually we got almost all the war score we needed before even getting into the Portuguese lands. Oh boy, it's about to happen, everybody. We're gonna piece out the uh, Portuguese here first, and we got 80% war score with the Castilians. I think it's time we claim our brand new vassal over here, Castile, which comes alongside with all of its personal units union members so we now have Aragon, Castile, Navarra and Naples all as our junior partners and we're gonna use the money we took from them to pay off their debt making them a little bit more loyal now and this also means we can enact the first reform on the centralization path we're also going to be taking the rest of our vassals cores from the Ottomans as we are in the process of integrating them which means we got the crusade bonuses again damn auto bros you gonna get stack and vipendium yes you did the Reichsrofrat, which gives me minus five idea cost and Diplo reputation plus one until the end of the game. Absolutely love playing as the Austrians, man. Seeing as we have so many extra mill points, we're gonna use them to barrage every single thing around here. And let's just rush for Constantinople. I don't really want to go for 100% since I don't care that much. I just need these exact lands over here so that afterwards I can do this mission that offers me a restoration of Union C beyond the poles that in turn means I get Lithuania as well. Oh no, my heir dies. 553, five, I get a 553, five, I get rid of the freaking 225, bro, yes. It is giving me 21 imperial authority, which is a massive amount. Before we do use the expand the empire CB again, we need to be at peace because in order to do this next reform, we have everything we need. In fact, we have way more imperial authority than I wanted to. If I timed it right, I could have done the last reform reform now, but I don't want to do the last reform now. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to revoke the Privilegia, which essentially makes every single nation in the HRE my vassal, and it's a special kind of vassal because none of these guys here actually take up a Diplo slot. There are some nations that chose not to become a vassal, and these nations we're simply just going to be attacking, and we're going to go for the Expand Empire CB against them. Remember that nations which were co belligerated in a Expand and Empire War cannot join the Empire. So that means in the case of Florence over here, all we can do is get a white piece and then later on we can just add them to the Empire if we want to. Everybody now is a part of the Empire once more and we have a hundred Imperial Authority which means that we can actually renovate the Empire and that means everybody who is a vassal of ours and is also a part of the Empire as well as everybody who is a part of the Empire but is not not a vassal will become a part of our nation but you know what guys I want to turn this into a world conquest and in order to turn this into a world conquest we can click renovate empire later after we've added more nations to the empire we're gonna go for the restoration of union against the Poles Booyah Shaka nobody cares Poland you're gonna be our junior partner in a few seconds also want to mention guys that despite the fact that I do not have an alliance with Muscovy or with Denmark, I did send them a royal marriage just for the small chance that I will get a Habsburg.
Habsburg on their thrones, similarly to what happened with the Castilians over here. And since we're pretty much idling this war, we're gonna expand empire on Brittany also. Alrighty everybody, let's uh, get two more personal unions, get their money as well, and Darya Goboyoz. Look at all these beautiful vassals that we have and personal union members. Despite only playing for 59 years, it took me two actual real life weeks to do this playthrough and I want this to be the first part in my Austrian world conquest saga. So if you want to see the second part where we go ahead and we take the rest of the world, then let's get this to 15,000 likes. And if you enjoyed the video and you made it to this point and you're not subscribed, then why not consider subscribing because I assume you liked the video, didn't you? I also recommend you check out my German Empire borders in 1550 as Brandenburg video and I'll see you in the next one. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.